rhetoric or rather speech making was a very important part of Roman society and Roman politics. As part of your education, you would have been taught how to make successful speeches and there were rhetorical handbooks and certain tricks that you were taught how um, that you should use to make a successful speech. And in, in, an, in an age where there was no TV, no internet or other media, appearing as a successful orator in public was a crucial way to advance your career. And people often started with making speeches in, in, in court cases and that was then was a starting point for a political career. So, um, and Cicero went through this normal route as many young people of his age. He started with court speeches and uh, what is interesting in Cicero's case that even his first court cases often had a political angle that m m contributed to the fact that he was noted as an up-and-coming orator. And then part, part of his speeches were given in court cases and part of his speeches later on when he had political offices in the Senate or in the Popular Assembly. And what you did as a Roman orator was, you, you obviously you first thought about what you wanted to talk about and then you worked it out in your head what you wanted to say and then you, you practiced it and then you turned up and gave your speech without any notes which obviously if politi politicians do it nowadays in a, in a party conference speech, it's always noted as a great achievement. But that was common in Roman politics. And they had certain memory techniques that would help you to memorize a full speech. And afterwards, obviously, there was some oral tradition about it. It would be talked about or your friends would have made notes or things like that. But what you did as an orator, if you were very happy with that speech or it was a very important speech, you would write it up afterwards and then circulate that version to your friends and then your friends would circulate it further and then it would get out and about and even increase the impact of this particular speech. But the consequence of that is everything that survives and that we now read as a speech is a bit of a, um, of a, not a fake in a way, because firstly, obviously, we read it and so we lose the entire performance dimension because what was important was not just what you said, but also how you said it. And the second point is that all the texts that we have nowadays were written up after the event. So there's a big discussion in scholarship, what is the relationship between the speeches actually delivered at the time and the written versions that survive. And most people nowadays think that the argument wouldn't be changed very much, especially if they were published soon after the delivery, because people who had heard the speech would have known what the person had said, and if you published something completely different, people would notice, as they did in some very famous cases. But that the person touched up the style, a work made sure it conformed to all the rhetorical rules, was even more effective. And we have some indication of that from Cicero's letters, where he sometimes sends a draft of a speech to his friends. And then they say, oh, you should change this and you should change that. And he does so, because if he, if he happened to have the text of the speech, we can see that these changes have been made. So what we are talking about are sort of ideal speeches, in a sense, what Cicero would have liked to say on the day, even if he might not always have said exactly the same in those same words. Um, although presumably the argument was the same, but not necessarily the exact wording. By the same time, this is all we have. And so if it's not a good solution just to say, oh, we don't know what Cicero ever said, so let's give up. I mean, what he published is what he thought would have been a good speech to make on that occasion. So it still gives us a lot of important information about the political situation at Rome and his oratorical style.